Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So I got a little something to share. Um... Deborah Lee did an interview because she's coming out with a book, a little memoir. And you know, they always, when they get old, they want to come out with a little memoir and tell everybody business. Um, so Deborah Lee is not any different. If you wonder who Deborah Lee is, she's the former CEO of BET. She's been stepped down from that. She retired from that probably about three years ago or so. And she does a little interview promoting her memoir. Okay. And I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm not even going to go over the whole thing, okay? Just, we just want y'all to hear a couple of minutes because we, we might go deeper into this in a live stream because it needs a live stream. But I just want to touch base with this, touch point with this. I just want y'all to hear just a couple of different little things. This, this boss chick stuff that black women want y'all to believe that they're so excellent and wonderful and brilliant and they do everything on their own. And then that's why they become bosses and all that kind of stuff. It's complete lies, all lies. And we are going to play. Now, I'm not going to make the same mistake I did last time. I'm going to not show you guys, but I'm also going to do it a little differently so you can actually hear what's going on in this clip. All right. So I'm going to actually let you hear it for real. Right, you that. Yeah, so, so, so great <laughs> to see you, Robin. Thank wonderful. you for having me. Pub day. Pub Today. Day. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you do not hold back. You are really personal in, yeah. in sharing your story. Yeah. Uh, why now? Well, I stepped down from BET about three years ago, and I was supposed to retire, but, mm -hmm. you know, that never works for those of us who are used to working so hard. Um, and I always wanted to write a book, and I wanted to give advice to those coming behind me, because that's always been part of who I am. You know, I was a counselor in college and law school, you know, did hiring at the law firm, blah, 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 built a great team at BET. And I've always thought I was pretty normal. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. the smartest kid in the class. I was maybe fifth or sixth. Okay. <laughs> I went to all black public high school. And I just want young people to know if I can do it, they can do it too. Mm -hmm. And they should dream big. And I looked around when I stepped down and realized there's still very few black female CEOs. And it's nothing, it's not anything I dreamt of. But now that I've done it, I loved it. And people come up to me and thank me for doing it. And I wanted them to know it mm. is possible. And you're so candid in talking about the triumphs and trials and the challenges. Right. And you really want to help, especially women in the workplace. Right. You uh, talked about your working and personal relationship with your former boss at BET, Bob Johnson. Right. So what is your advice about that, um, the, the power dynamics mm -hmm. for women in the workplace? Right. Well, I wanted to tell that story because the power dynamics are so important mm -hmm. in a relationship, and especially if you're having a relationship with someone you work for. Right. Uh, and we all know the potential pitfalls. Um, you know, I worked for Bob Johnson for 10 years before we had a personal romantic relationship mm -hmm. and he was a mentor and he pushed me and you know he's responsible for a lot of my success uh we did have a, a relationship while we were both married we ended up both divorced and then people knew about the relationship now i'm just gonna pause right there for now that's almost all you need to hear Behind every great boss chick black woman is usually a black man or any other man of some sort. For all of that black women's magic power, black magic, whatever, black girl magic and all that kind of stuff, she got where she got because she was screwing her boss, Robert Johnson. And did you catch that? And he blew over the other part, baby. She said, we were both, you know, married in a relationship. And then we both got divorced. So y'all decided to have an affair 
with each other, cheating on y'all spouse. And you thought that relationship would end well? You knowingly got into a relationship. First of all, you knowingly cheated on your man. Then you got into a relationship with him knowing that he's knowingly cheating on his wife. And then y'all had a secret relationship in the workplace and you get to where you get to and you get up in the upper echelon and you get moved up, promoted up, propped up. And he pushed you and he's responsible for your success, correct? All the while, you knew you was cheating on your man and you knew he was cheating on his woman. And then once y'all got divorced, that was the free for all. That was the green light, was it not, Miss Lee? That you can now come out into the open after a little bit, you know, let the dust settle a little bit on your divorces so it don't look so obvious that y'all were screwing each other. And now all of a sudden, once you, you, you I, I didn't let her finish it. This is why it's going to be a live stream because I didn't let her finish that because she say a lot of inflammatory stuff afterwards, after their relationship dissolved. What did you think it was going to do, ma'am? But this this little clip right here that I'm talking about isn't so much about specifically Deborah Lee. We could get into her in a moment. It's about this concept of black girl magic and black boss chicks. And they act like they've gotten to these places without these men, without sleeping with their bosses, sleeping with men, sleeping their way to the top. Or even if they're not sleeping with them, that there was a man somewhere, usually a black man. If we talk about a black woman, there was usually a black man lending his expertise, lending his leadership, lending his system, order, and structure to her to get her to a successful space. Correct? So all that boss talk about how y'all did it on y'all own and didn't got no help. And wasn't no man away helping you. And you did this and you had to struggle to do it this way and struggle to do it that way and blah, 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 blah. In order to get to the top, lo and behold, you in the back room gagging, sound like aliens gagging in the back. That's what you doing in order to get your spot. And then you, but I became CEO when he left the company. I just bet you did. And they want to portray to the world, if I could do it, Y'all can do it. Yeah, uh, plenty of women have done that in the workplace, beloved. Plenty of women, white, black, and otherwise, have done that in the workplace to get higher and higher up in their workplace or climb the, they climb the uh, corporate ladder on their knees. A lot of women do that. That ain't special. That ain't black girl magic. That's, that's knee pad magic, baby. That's knee pad magic. That's gawk gawk magic. That is not magic. That is, if you got the skill to pay the bill, baby. And if he wants you and all that kind of stuff, and he find that you look good and you giving up the cakes and all that kind of stuff, you know, he go ahead and throw you, sometimes might throw you more than a little bone. He gonna go ahead and make you successful. And then I broke up. I Oh, you broke up. Oh, you broke up. That's interesting. That's interesting. How did you think that was going to end? But that boss chick stuff, a whole myth. It's always a man somewhere that have given their structure and have given their leadership, who have given their four Ps to a woman, whether that was done in a romantic way or a professional way. Some way, somehow, a man has opened the door and paved the way and given her what she needs and given her the focus that she needs in order to move forward and to become a, a, a substantial in her field, to become uh, notable in her field, to become, you understand, to excel in whatever chosen field she's in. Rarely is it a woman that really did it on her own. Men don't have that to fall back on, climbing the corporate ladder on their knees. I'm sure there are exceptions, but generally speaking, Plenty of women do that, baby. You ain't came up with nothing new, Deborah. You're not that brilliant, are we? Because it don't take a lot of brilliance to get on your knees. Any common street walker can do that. Shit. 
she said a lot of inflammatory stuff that I'm not speaking on right now, but we're going to speak on it because we got to blow this little black girl magic boss chick myth out of the water. It's, 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 it was all a dream. Used to read straight up magazine. Deborah, did you used to read straight up magazine? Used to read straight up magazine. Okay. Anyway, we'll talk about this myth later. Okay. But as for now, I want everybody to jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye bye, Crimsonite. Hello, my Crimsonites and all of my supporters. I invite you to go and get your copy of my new book, Reclaiming the Black Feminine, The Lies of Feminism and the Road to Recovery, on sale now at crimsoncure.com. This is guaranteed to change your perspective and positively impact your life. So go ahead now to crimsoncure.com and get your copy today.